So I'm making a Roman blind for a um, lovely neighbour. In fact, it's a, a business uh, neighbour and they're called Bacon Butty and they um, have asked me to do a blind for their window and their door. And this is the door Roman blind and um, I'm just getting the pattern right to match the other blind. And you always match the pattern at the top so um, the plates are sitting like that on the other blind so I've done it exactly the same. And this fabric is um, Teacups by Clark and Clark um, and it's the taupe colour. So I've centred the blind which is going to be 70 centimetres um, and now I'm going to cut the sides to make the sides the right size. <laughs> I'm just going to allow about sort of four and a half what, four centimetres um, allowance at the side so where the pin is is going to be the fold so I'm going to use the pattern here to cut now you could do a, a big line with your with your yardstick and I'm, I'm going to just do it by eye because that's how I roll <laughs> I'm going to turn this over here where the pin is and just pop the pin that way and then do the same this side and then I'm going to flip it over and then with my ruler I'm just going to make sure that there's the right amount four centimeters it's so four centimeters there pin in and another four centimeters just there so once you've done this side you now get your tape measure um, in fact it might be better to use a straight rule so yardstick straight rule which I use a lot um, this one is 70, so we bring it to the 70. And then just keep bringing it up, making it 70 all the way up. Right, I'm going to get some soft Velcro. It's covered in fluff. <laughs> and mark out how much I need. I'm doing the top now. I'm going to make the blinds that's got no stitch lines in it because it makes it more professional and I think it's quite ugly when you see stitch lines. To make the Velcro invisible, we have to position it above, like flip the, so say that's the top, okay? Put it on the bench and you're going to position the velcro on the other side but you're not going to go right through so you can see it there you're just going to put it here so you pin the velcro in place so that it's literally about a quarter of a centimeter of that above your crease line okay. so I'm going to go all the way along and sew this on here I mean you can pin all along if you want but I, I don't because I've been doing it so long now, I don't need to. But, um, you know, if you're a beginner, I would pin it because obviously, you know, it does move and it is a bit tricky, you know. Do it crossways so that you can go over your pin. I mean, some machines don't like it when you go over the pin. And if you're going to go over pins, try and use the thin ones because uh, these are quite thick. But I've got an industrial machine, so mine, uh, my machine will go over those quite easily. Let's go to the machine now and sew this um, Velcro. So you put your presser foot down, you go forward, back a little bit, forward. Now I go over my pins, it doesn't really make any difference. You keep to the end, take your pins out as you go along. And then make sure you've got the same amount. Can you see here? Take the pin out if you want to. Make sure the presser foot's down when you move to the next bit. And then 
make sure you keep it straight and you keep the crease exactly the amount again keep it nice and flat and make sure you keep this bit flat now I have made it slightly too big so I will have to cut this down a bit over and then back your first bottom row of stitching done. To do the bottom hem, which is where the little bottom bar goes to weight the blind down. It's about a seven um, or, two, or eight centimeter um, allowance. So I'll just give that a press. It's important you make, make it all look the same along because you do see this bit um, on the back and you want it to be nice and straight. So. I'm now going to do the um, lining. You have to make the lining a little bit bigger than the drop of the, the blind to um, incorporate the rod pockets. The blind is 70 wide, 70 wide, but you have to take off obviously enough for the side, two centimeters, I'd say. Take a, make it about a two centimeter allowance. your width and it's going to sit like that but obviously that one's going in the wrong direction so I just flip this over and press this on the crease that is your piece of lining now we're going to work out our rod pockets which are the little channels which where the little plastic rods go through I'm going to work out the um, the channels and and then once we've got those we'll start um you know pressing them in place and sewing them together so i've worked out the channels and the first one is going to be 15.1 right and then we press this in and then to get your little channel you move this forward it about half a centimetre and then where that crease line is is where we're going to sew and I'm going to mark the first crease line with a pin and the next one is going to be 41.7 okay, so 41.7 is here so you put a pin in there and then you do 41.7 in the middle 41.7 on the end. A bit fiddly. Pull that forward again like you did a minute ago, half a centimetre, and pin in again on the crease line. Spot on 85. <laughs> <laughs> so all we need to do now um, is sew the rod pockets all the way down and then they'll be ready to put the lining into the Roman blind. 
I knew that was going to happen. I'll just show you one because once you've seen one, you, I'm sure you'll be able to work, work out the rest of them. <laughs> so you just place the needle on the crease line, just about a centimetre in. Switch your machine on. Go forward a tiny bit, and then back, and then take your pin out because it just click there. Sometimes it clicks on the needle and it might break the needle, but main, mostly it doesn't. Just go along the crease line, pick it slowly. I mean, obviously, if you've been doing it a while, you can go fast, but you're just learning. So I've just positioned the lining into the Roman blind so that we can now start attaching our um, lining onto the face so the rod pocket and that I do that where the rod pockets are. What I do is I go up to the sort of middle rod pocket and then I measure, look at my measurements and measure that you know I've got to be um, 41.7 away from the bottom and I check it sort of middle side another side and I am 41.7 and it's, it's dead on so I pin from that middle rod pocket up to the next one because I know that this isn't going anywhere this bit and it keeps it in place so I move the line down a tiny bit so I can get to this rod pocket and I lift the lining up so that you've got the underside of the rod pocket and you can see that it's nice and flat so I've turned the lining up and I'm now going to slip stitch here at intervals. I mean, we're going to have two rings here, which is where the mechanisms are going to be going. These are the mechanisms which fit into the track. Um, they're like little cartridges. And they get positioned 10 centimetres from each end of the blind. You have one there and we'll have one here. If the blind was wider, I might put one in the middle, but we don't need one in the middle, we only need two. What I'm going to then do is make sure that my stitches are 10 centimetres from the edge coming in each side, so that will take the weight of the cording and the rings and will obviously um, work the blind up and down. I'm just going to position this end one just in here. I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of the face. Just going to go back in there again. Make sure it's nice and secure. And then I'm going to do one here, one here, one here. Just sort of separate them around. It just gives it a bit of um, support. And then just... can pin from here to here because I'm going to do this one next so I get my pins I'm pulling the bottom one up now so I'm going to lock this one in to make sure it's nice and straight the other side and pull back to the next channel along and just carry on locking in. Get 
get to this bit here and obviously that's going to go under there so I'm going to bring this up creased Right, so I'm just trimming off the excess. Lift that up. Put that in. Put that over. Um, and now make this 12 centimeters. Join this together. Mind you, don't stab your thumb because then you're going to need a plaster. And plasters and soft furnishings, well, bloody fingers and soft furnishings don't match. A thimble's never done thingy. Um, some people use thimbles, but I, I don't feel comfortable just with one. You just got hard fingers now. Yeah, I mean, look at my finger. I mean, my nails are terrible at the moment, but I've got like a hard skin there where it just builds up and it's like a kind of like protector yeah. so obviously I'm taking quite little stitches here Oops, sorry. <laughs> so I'm going to use this this stitch to go around the whole blind it's just a, a running stitch going through the lining and up and some people can do some people do a different stitch along here. You can go um, pick up the lining a tiny bit like this, and you can go through this bit like that. It doesn't really matter what whatever floats your boat. But I have to say, I do love hand sewing. I find it very relaxing and therapeutic, and it keeps me nice and happy and calm and. Just go around the blind. I suppose this is all the time consuming stuff. Right, I'm just um, sewing up to the corner uh, to the corner on the edge of the bottom hem. Um, and I'm gonna just stop here. I'm just gonna put a sort of little stitch in here. to secure that a little bit and then I'm going to leave that tailing off because the, the little bottom bar will go in there and then when that's in I'll then sew up, you know to the corner with that little bit of cotton so now I shall carry on sewing up this edge There's a little bit of thread here that we left mm -hmm. and then slide that through so you've got that little bit underneath so it's going through like this push it right through 
and I will secure it by sewing this little thing up here. Fiberglass rods. So I have to cut these, so obviously I usually bring it in about half a centimetre each end and then I mark it with a get your clippers, fiberglass clippers, and then you obviously mark, get it where the mark is, and then go. So we just push that fold down and twist. Just twist it a little bit at the end, so it has to go into where the lining is. and then I, I shall sew them closed. Then I'm going to sew the rings on. I've left myself really short of cord. I've literally only got enough. So I've only got enough to do three, but you only need three. And then clip that little tail. And then I've got two more to do here. I've just got to put some more cotton on my needle. So this track is what you call um, a cartridge track. It's a metal track and it has male velcro on the inside of it which attaches to the female velcro on the blind. So that's how they attach together. The track has cartridges which are little barrels that wind the actual cord into them as the blind is pulled up. So uh, these are like just little cartridge things that slide through a little rod that's in the middle of this track. So it's all put together, the chain's on the end, um, that's the mechanism at the side that will pull the cord up and down. And um, we clip these in place, I usually set them 10 inches in. And then that is going to sit like this, so I can then attach the two Velcros together like this. This is a different blind, because um, the other people needed their blind and I realised I hadn't added this part to the video. So, um, if you need these cartridge tracks, by the way, I do sell them. So, I'm just going to align the two cords to where the rings are. And I tend to align it so it's in the middle of the ring and clip that in place. And then this one looks like it, it already is in the middle. So, I'm now going to thread the cords. So these are like little, they're called orbs, and you just squeeze them together and that will make the little hole inside for the cord to go through. So you just squeeze it and thread the cord through, like that. Hold the cord, squeeze again and pull it up so that it's just sort of like where the ring stops, kind of like that. And then we do the same again through the rings. And some blinds would have a lot a lot more of these rings and you'd have obviously depending on them how wide it was so you'd be doing quite a few of them squeeze squeeze and through there okay so yep. I've made the blind um, it's all ready to go and we're gonna go next door now and hang them anything you'd like me to make and you'd like a tutorial on um, do let me know and I'll be happy to help so that's the end of this tutorial I hope you've enjoyed it come back soon bye for now